Hey everyone, welcome to this module, Building a Website with Experience Management Tools. This is a part of the Business Practitioner Persona, and once again, we are in Liferate DXP 7.3. We have a few key module takeaways here. Content pages can combine fragments and widgets to create dynamic and engaging web pages. So we're gonna be talking about those building blocks there in particular. Master page templates provide a way to define common page elements using fragments that can be used across various sites. It's a way to save time here by spinning up these different templates. Publications can be used to make site changes in an editing environment and then schedule the future publication of those changes. If you want to switch content at like 2 a.m., uh, you do not have to be up doing that. Uh, you can schedule those changes for later on. If you're going to be following along with our exercises, make sure that you have the Java JDK installed to run Lifeware DXP, and you can download that from this Oracle link here. Make sure you have your unzip module exercise files in the following folder structure. If you're on Windows, do it in a C slash Liferay folder. And then if you're on Unix, it'll be user home slash Liferay. And as always, make sure you have a running instance of Liferay DXP 7.3. As is the case in all modules, we are using Livingston Hotels and Resorts as our fake use case. In this particular situation, the web design team needs to implement the following for the Livingston Life blog site. They need the ability to quickly create pages using materials created by the development team. So we're already collaborating between two departments. As always, for a large enterprise business, we need consistent styling across multiple pages. And we also need the ability for multiple users to schedule publication of their created content. The good news is these are all things that we can tackle with DXP 7.3. Here are the KPIs that they're looking at. We want to improve the consistency in the look and feel across sites, make sure everything is within the brand, but we also want to reduce the amount of time spent creating new site pages. So that brings us to our first section here, using content pages and fragments. It makes sense that we start with content pages as they are the default page type in DXP 7.3. These pages are highly customizable and out of the box, we have a lot of tools to help turn them into whatever it is you need. Some things to remember in our customization, the editing UI contains several drag and drop elements. These are gonna be broken up into fragments and widgets. We'll talk about that in a bit. It's designed to be used with minimal configuration. As someone who spins up a lot of pages and isn't highly technical, um, I can definitely attest to this. And when we're building out these pages, there's two main editing modes. Page design, where we're kind of creating the structure of the pages, looking at more of the broad strokes, top level page creation. And then we have the content edition where we're actually going in, customizing the content that is going to live on that page. So let's jump back and talk about page design. The page design editing mode contains the following action elements. We have our fragments and widgets. We have contents, which is referring to the web content we have, page structure, page design options, and comments. You'll see in this image, these items can all be found in the upper right. So let's talk about fragments and widgets. The fragments and widgets section contains elements that you can drag and drop to build out content. This can be done by anyone. You don't need to have a special technical knowledge. Fragments are predefined segments that can contain edible elements, including text, images, or links that can be replaced with custom content or mapped to existing site content. A great example of this is something like a banner. If I drag a banner fragment onto my page, I'll have a large section where I can drop a picture in, I can edit text, and I can do that all at the same time. Then we have widgets, which are a little more complicated since they're applications and they can be added to the page as well. So as I was saying, Liferay does come with out of the box fragments and let's take a look at those to get a better feel for them. So we have our layout elements. These provide organizational guide to enclosed content. So you can be thinking of containers or grids, um, providing the spacing and the structure for your page. And then we'll have basic components. These are simple elements of content that can be placed within layout elements. So we have the example here of an image that populates one area of a grid. We have our content display. These are fragments that are related to displaying and enhancing content. Be thinking of like content flags and rating systems. You'll have featured content. These are multi-part fragments useful for displaying prominent content. So again, there's that banner I was talking about earlier where we can have the image and we can have the text. We have footers, various fragments that serve as page footers. And we also have navigation bars. So we have various fragments that can serve as the headers and navigation bars for our pages. So again, all things that we can drag and drop right onto the page. One of the great strengths of fragments is their easy editing capabilities. Right after we drag them, without jumping into the code, we can edit a few different things. We have the layout style, so this is like the margin, the background, color, effects, container width. We have the text, hyperlinks, images, the grid layout, if you are using the grid layout element. And the cool thing is edited fragments can be duplicated or saved for future use. Maybe I want to include some sample text or apply some formatting and reuse it on other pages, I have that option. 
Then we have the content section. And this can be a little confusing because I know we said we have a content addition editing, uh, but this content is referring to the web content on the page. So this is referring to specific pieces of web content and we do have the ability to edit them. Uh, we can manage the permissions on them and decide who is able to view them. Then we have the page structure tab. And this provides a hierarchical view of the fragments and their associated content on the page. It allows for easy access to specific pieces of content and selecting a field from that column will highlight it on the page. I like this a lot because when I'm creating large or more complex pages, I still get that perspective that I can easily track and see everything all together. Next we have comments. These are annotations that can be added to fragments without altering any of their contained content. It allows team members to collaborate while creating content pages. This is great for working with teams and, and other team members. If I'm creating content and I wanna get an okay on it, I can have other people look at it and have the ability to mention other users, say, hey, could you take a look at this without like actually going into the text. It's something that only we can see. When we're using the mentioning features, um, we can also be including our permissions in there as well. All right, it's time for a knowledge check. Content pages are created by dragging and dropping fragments and widgets. Fragments can be edited inline or using the Liferay Fragment Editor, which allows for direct editing of the CSS, HTML, and JavaScript that create them. A hierarchical breakdown of a page's fragments and the content found within them can be found in the Page Structure tab of the Page Design Editing Mode.